In a raw 24-bit RGB bitmap, the image is composed of three primary colour channels, red, green and blue. This means that three separate values are stored for each and every pixel. These three values encode the amounts of red, green and blue in the pixel. Each value is somewhere between 0 and 255. It's possible to visualise every possible combination of red, green and blue on a three-dimensional chart. A chart which has three mutually perpendicular axes, one for each of the primary colours, and with the values on each axis ranging from 0 to 255. For example, these three particular values of red, green and blue intersect at a point in this three-dimensional space to define this particular shade of violet, commonly known as lilac. You can therefore imagine that every possible colour is located somewhere within this cube. This cube represents the full range of colours possible with the 24-bit RGB system, or to put it another way, this cube represents the full gamut of the RGB colour space. Notice that the nearest top corner of this cube is white, this is where the values of red, green and blue are all at their maximum of 255. When the same cube is viewed from the opposite side, you can see the origins of these three axes, the point at which the values of red, green and blue are zero. This is where you'll find a complete absence of colour, namely black. If we increase the three values for a pixel, or indeed any one of them, we are necessarily moving closer to the white corner. So it follows that we're increasing the brightness of the pixel. This means that the red, green and blue values for any given pixel inherently contain information about the brightness of the pixel. Now, you can imagine a line connecting the black corner to the white corner of this cube. It's along this space diagonal that you'll find shades of grey, the so-called grayscale. At any point on the grayscale, the corresponding values of red, green and blue are always the same as each other. With 24-bit RGB, we can encode 16.7 million different colours, but the human eye can only distinguish about 10 million different colours, so the RGB system is not the most efficient way to save or transmit images. Why CBCR? is an alternative to RGB. It evolved from a system known as YUV, which was developed in the 1950s to transmit analogue colour television signals whilst maintaining backwards compatibility with black and white TV sets. YUV had the added advantage of consuming less bandwidth than RGB would have needed. These days, YCBCR is used to store, process and transmit digital TV and video. Like RGB, YCBCR uses three separate pieces of information for each pixel, but this information is somewhat different. Y is known as the luma component. It contains a value for the luminance or brightness of the pixel. This is very similar to the grayscale version of the original image. CB and CR are known as the chroma components, chroma being the Greek word for colour. CB is the chrominance blue component, and CR is the chrominance red component. The Y, CB and CR values for a pixel can be calculated from the RGB values using special formulas. The Y, CB, CR colour space can also be visualised in three dimensions. The centre of the face of this Y, CB, CR cube is white. The centre of the opposite face is black. Now, imagine a line through the cube connecting the centres of these two faces. This line represents the full range of the luma component Y. Or, to put it another way, this is the grayscale in the YCBCR colour model. Every possible value of Y can therefore be thought of as being located in the centre of a thin slice of this cube. And the corresponding values of CB and CR are the coordinates on this two-dimensional 
chrominance plane. Notice that lower values of CB and CR are in the lower left-hand corner of this plane, which is where shades of green can be found. It should be said that demonstrating YCBCR with these images of an owl and a pussycat is a convenient way to visualise the principle, but it is very much an abstraction. You can't just mix these components together, as you would red, green and blue, to produce the final image. Some software or a digital TV set needs to process and interpret these components and, ultimately, convert them back into RGB so they can be displayed on a screen. The key feature of the YCBCR system is that the brightness of each pixel is encoded separately from the colour information. This means that the colour information can be changed independently of the brightness information. Research has shown that human sight is much more sensitive to different levels of brightness than it is to differences in colour. So, if we can reduce the colour detail of an image without compromising the brightness, we can generate an image that looks just as good to the human eye, but contains less data. Converting an RGB image to YCBCR is therefore one of the first steps in JPEG image compression. 